God of greetings. This is John Glover on this date of October 25th, 2019. Can everyone hear me? God of yes. greetings, everyone. Uh, we praise God that you're here, but it's important that we all understand this God order, that God has ordained a black man, Professor Gabriel Audo Yibo, is the ultimate intelligence of Eta Sub Infinity. Eta Sub N is the formula which exactly represents intelligence, and N in that same formula is the level of intelligence. God has designed that N for Professor Yibo to be infinity, which is why it's Eta Sub Infinity Intelligence. Since we as black people, we share the same genes as Professor Gio Yibo, God has now reordained the black race to be the most intelligent, richest, and most invincible race. We're now going to, in this broadcast today, we're going to go into coming to terms to what that really means in terms of the responsibilities we have as a people as being the most intelligent race, and especially dealing with the main topic of tonight, which is, or today, which is intellectual starvation. But before we go into that, we're going to go into what you see on your screen here. Do you see the page in front of you? Yeah. Yeah. This is a surrender yeah. from Gottingen University as a consequence of being members of the race who are the most intelligent. Gottingen University celebrated Gagat discovery by Professor Gabriel Aldoyibo, a Gagatian, a black man from a home continent of Gagatia. If you look there at the top of the list, his work is listed there. God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem. But the particular point that I want to call your attention to about this is the Gauss year 2005, as you can see here, Gauss year 2005 is right here in the red under the blue rectangle logo. Gauss year 2005 was celebrating their greatest European mathematician prior to Gagat, which is Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Carl Frederick Gauss is considered to be the greatest European mathematician since antiquity. And so why that's important is in, he lived from 1777 to 1855. To honor Gauss, they selected the greatest mathematics works throughout the, each week of the year. And the number one work was awarded what's called the Gauss Prize, the highest academic prize in Europe. So when you see that and understand that concept, you have to understand that Gagat not only was selected as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss, it was awarded the Gauss Prize, the highest academic prize in Europe for mathematics. That is very important to understand because Gottingen would have never selected the work of a black person prior to Gagat. They would have never listed that work or had even that work listed up there even in the possible running. Gagat not only made it possible for them to list the work of Gagat up there, but to put it at the number one work to honor Gauss and awarding it the Gauss Prize of Mathematics. This is the God order that we've been blessed with and to us to understand. We also just take a look at the runners up that were there just very quickly. If you go to NR19, you'll see the name Sir Michael Atiyah and Daniel Yagunitzer. Sir Professor Michael Atiyah, if you just go to his page just quick, quickly, just, can everyone see his page? Okay. Sir Professor Michael Francis uh, Atia, he transformed on earlier this year in January 11, 2019. He was a British Lebanese mathematician specializing in geometry. But what's important to understand is if you look here in the uh, second paragraph, if you go past the Sudan and Egypt where he grew up, it says that he spent most of his academic life in the United Kingdom at the University of Oxford and the University of Cambridge. Oxford and Cambridge making up the most prestigious universities in the so the United Kingdom, or the Oxbridge, which is what they call it. He was also in the United States at the Institute for Advanced Study. He was the president of the Royal Society, founding director of the Isaac Newton Institute, but most importantly, the master of Trinity College at Cambridge. That's a very prestigious chair, which was held once time by other famous luminaries from Cambridge, such as Sir Professor Isaac Newton. So what's important to understand is for all practical purposes, Atia is a successor to Sir Professor Isaac Newton. And Sir Professor Isaac Newton, just to give you a quick sample of who he is, Sir Professor Isaac Newton 
is an English mathematician, physicist, astronomer, theologian, and author, described in his own day as a natural philosopher, who was widely recognized as one of the most influential scientists of all time and a key figure in the scientific revolution. His book, Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica, or translated from the Latin as Mathematical Physi uh, Principles of Natural Philosophy, first published in 1687, laid the foundations of classical mechanics, and Newton made seminal contributions to optics, as well as the development of infinitesimal calculus. So what's important to understand is Newton is recognized as one of the top three European mathematicians. Along with Euler and Gauss, they make up the top three. Atiyah is a successor to Newton. So all practical purposes, that is what you have to understand about Atiyah. The other thing about Atiyah's work, if you remember what it listed and stated, it said specifically that his work was dealing with field medalist lectures. Well, what is the field's medal? Can everyone see the page in front of them? Can everyone see the page in front of them? So what's important to understand in this page is... Praise God. The page you see in front of them says, A field medal is a prize awarded to two, three, or four mathematicians under the age of 40 in the International Congress of International Mathematics Union. The field medal is regarded as one of the highest honors a mathematician can receive and has been described as the Mathematician's Nobel Prize. Can you all see that? Yes. Praise God for that. What's important to understand is Atia won this award back in 1966. I'm scrolling down the list of the winners so you can see it. You see a Tia's name in the screen there. Yeah. Okay. And if you look at yeah. the year, 1966, in Moscow, 30, uh, sorry, 53 years ago, he won this prize. So you have to understand that he has won a prize which is equivalent to Nobel Prize for mathematics. If you also count up the number of people who have won this prize up into the year 2002, or 2005, actually, when the Gauss Year 2005 celebration took place, you have to realize there are about 44 names, including Atiyah's name. Does everyone understand that? Okay. Yes. So Atiyah is recognized as a successor to Newton, who is one of the top three European mathematicians. He has the distinction of winning a prize which is equivalent to Nobel Prize in Mathematics, he is also known as being in a work that contains all of the field medalists up until that year of 2005. Any one of those points could have made him the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Because again, God that is being defined here is by the company that it keeps. So, Atiyah could have been the number one work because of those three points I mentioned. Gottigen ranked Atiyah's work and the other 43 Nobel Prize Award equivalents work as being inferior to Gagat. That is why it's placed seven places below where Gagat is placed. Can you see that? Gagat is placed up here. Sorry about that. Went to the wrong page. Gagat is listed up here. Atiyah's work is listed down here. There's seven places difference. Can you see that? From 26 to 19. Okay, that is Gottingen telling the world that Gagat is worth more than 44 Nobel Prizes. Can you see that? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. This is why they awarded Gagat the Gauss Prize, which is superior to the Nobel Prize for Physics or the actual Field Medal, which is the Nobel Prize for Mathematics equivalent. So that's what you have to understand here. If you go to number 23, or week 23, if you look at the second name there, Anatoly T. Fermenko, who is he, you ask? Well, let's take a look. Can you all see Anatoly T. Fermenko's page in front of you?
Can you all see Anatoly Tibovich Fomenko's page in front of you? Praise God. Anatoly Tibovich Fomenko, uh, born in 1945, is a current day Russian mathematician and former Soviet mathematician. He's a professor at Moscow State University, like Oxford and Cambridge for uh, uh, the UK, and like Harvard and MIT for America. Moscow State is in the highest level in the, European, uh, in the Russian university system, in terms of universities. He's also a member of the Russian Academy of Sciences. That's very important. Does everyone see that? Does everyone see that? Okay, so what's important to understand about Fomenko is that Fomenko was a successor to uh, another famous European mathematician. And that mathematician I speak of is going to be listed here. The name of that mathematician is Professor Leonard Euler. Can you all see his page in front of you? Yes, I see him. Yeah, Professor good. Leonard Euler, born in 1707, transforming on 1783, was a Swiss mathematician physicist, astronomer, geographer, logician, and engineer who made important and influential discoveries in many branches of mathematics, such as infinitesimal calculus and graph theory, while also making pioneering contributions to several branches, such as topology and analytic number theory. He also introduced much of the modern mathematical terminology and notation, particularly for mathematical analysis such as the notion of a mathematical function. He also is also known for his work in mechanics, fluid dynamics, optics, astronomy, and music theory. Euler was, now this is the part that's important to listen to. Euler was one of the most eminent mathematics of the 18th century and is held to be one of the greatest in history. That's where you can tell why I said before about he's one of the top three European mathematicians. He is also widely considered to be the most prolific mathematician of all time. His collected works fill 92 volumes, more than anyone else in the field. Now the next part that you have to listen to is very important here, which is, he spent most of his adult life in St. Petersburg, Russia. The same Russia from which Fermenko comes from. This is how you know some Fermenko is a successor to Euler. Can you all see that? Yes. Praise God for yeah. that. So what's important now to understand in light of that is, in light of him being a successor to, uh, or Fermenko being a successor to Euler, this is important because Fermenko is a successor to another top three European mathematician. He could have easily been placed as the number one work to honor Gauss because Gauss, who came after Euler, had a lot of respect for Euler as a mathematician. However, Gottingen ranked the work of Fermenko inferior to Gottingen. That's why, if you see the page here, Fermenko's work is listed at week 23. Gottingen's work is listed at week 26. Fermenko is three places below. Can you see that? Yeah. Praise God. So that's again, a company that you keep defines you. Number, uh, sorry, if you go to week 24, you'll see the name David Hilbert. Who is he, you ask? Well, let's take a look. Can you all see the page of Professor David Hilbert in front of you? I see it. Praise God for that. So, David Hilbert, born in 1862, transformed on in 1943. He was a German mathematician and one of the most influential and universal mathematicians of the 19th and early 20th centuries. Hilbert discovered and developed a broad range of fundamental ideas in many areas. But what's important to understand is if you look at his picture on the right, if you scroll down, you will see that, first of all, if you look at the institutions he's associated with, the university that he's associated with is the University of Göttingen, or the Göttingen University. Can you see that? Yes. Can everyone see it on the screen? Yes. Göttingen University. Praise God. So he is in many ways a successor to Gauss. 
Gauss came before him from Göttingen as the head of the mathematics department. Hilbert succeeded him as the head of the mathematics department after Gauss. Can you see that? Yes. Praise God for that. What's important to understand also, if you scroll down, you will see the number of doctoral students. Now, in mathematics, the highest you can get, like in most subjects that are dealing with mathematical sciences, are the what you call what's called the PhD, which is your uh, the highest degree that you can get. What's important to understand here is in mathematics, it's usually very difficult for someone to get a PhD, uh, even when they're the best in the or in when they're stars in the field. But these people not only got PhDs. They also became stars in their own right and mathematics. As you can see from the list here, the links are hyperlinked as I went over. They lead to other pages that describe who they were and what they did. Hilbert has the distinction of overseeing 69 PhDs in mathematics under him. Did you, do you understand that? 69 PhDs under him, 69 mathematicians, in fact. Does everyone understand that? That's what's important to understand. It's also important to understand, like I said, that Hilbert comes from Göttingen themselves. They're the ones celebrating Gauss in this Gauss year 2005 celebration. They could have easily made him, and I'm talking about Hilbert, the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. However, Göttingen very painfully had to recognize the superiority of Professor Ebo in the work that he had been blessed with, and listed Gobbett as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Can you see that on your screen? This yes. is why we have to say as Gobbettians, we must praise God. Praise God. That's exact. Praise God, everyone. That's what's important to understand about this blessing of what God has given to us through Professor Hebo. And as I said before, without Gagat, we'd never be put on this list of this celebration. Gagat, on the other hand, not only forced them to Germans, who were the highest level in the European system, not only to put black people on the celebration, but at the very top of the celebration. That is the basis how that happened. So now you know how, where Gagat is ranked. Now you have to understand why it was ranked as that. And on a side note, it's important to understand the importance of our people recognizing the blessings that God has given to us as a people. The God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem was blessed through Professor Hebo with the totality of all solutions. All equations embedded inside just one equation. G, I, J, comma, J equals zero. What the Germans determined, however, through this uh, Gauss year 2005 celebration is the following. First of all, Gagat has ultimately defined the subject of mathematics. Gagat has defined mathematics to be the study of theorems. Let's break that down a little bit so you can understand better. What is a theorem? A theorem is a statement or a infallible truth that can never be challenged because once you have an infallible truth, it must be accepted by all. It cannot change, it cannot be hidden, it cannot be corrupted. Can you see that? Absolutely. For an example, 2 yes. plus 1, thank you for that, 2 plus 1, minus 3 equaling 0 is a theorem. There's no possibility of anyone being able to disprove that in the future. It's true as it was yesterday, it is true today, and it will be true tomorrow. It can never change. No one can disprove that. There's no so-called laboratory experiment that's going to disprove that. That's what is the power of a theorem. And it's infallible truth that everyone must come on board with no matter what their personal feelings are, or no matter what mind state they're in. Can you understand? Praise God. So, God has defined mathematics to be the study of theorems. That's the first important part. 
The next part that's important also to understand in the same definition from Gogget, the acronym, God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem. All the words in that acronym are important, but the last or the most important in this instance, which is Unified Theorem. Unified Theorem refers to the name, oh, I'm sorry that. Unified Theorem refers to what we call the issue of the combination of all theorems. All infallible truths are embedded inside G I J comma J equals zero. Can you understand that? Yes. God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem is an acronym. That acronym combined, all those words are important. The last two words, however, are the most important for this proof, which is unified theorem. Can you see, can you understand that part so far? Unified theorem means God that contains all theorems, which is what I said before, is an infallible truth. Since God that contains all infallible truth, that means that's very important, because that's already in itself a very powerful point, which we're going to get into later, actually a couple seconds, in terms of the proof of why Goggett was selected as the number one work to honor Gauss. So Goggett has defined mathematics to be the study of theorems, and Goggett has also defined Goggett, which is the God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem, to contain all theorems from the unified theorem part. Can you see that? Okay. We're now going to deduce the, rea the ultimate reality of since God that contains all the mathematics and since God that contains sorry, excuse me, let me say that again since God that has defined mathematics to be the study of theorems and since God that contains all theorems one can infallibly deduce that God that contains all of mathematics can you see that? That is, what Germans, that is what forced the Germans, who don't see themselves second to anyone, to now to recognize the work of a black man, which contains all mathematics, superseding the works of Tia and at works at week 19. It supersedes all the works of uh, uh, from Mako at week 23. It supersedes the work of uh, Hilbert and uh, all the others at uh, week 24, and every other work that was on the celebration as well as every other mathematical work that did make the celebration, provided that the mathematical work is correct. So it's the, on this basis, the Germans have recognized Gogget as the greatest mathematics work, because you can't get any better than a work that contains all infallible truths and all theorems. This is why they listed Gogget as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss, and they recognized this work not only as the number one work to honor Gauss, superseding the works of Hilbert, uh, sorry, Tia, uh, Fermenko, uh, uh, Hilbert, Newton, Euler, Riemann, who we're going to get into later, and even Gauss, who the celebration was dedicated towards. It has also forced them to recognize the reality that no longer is Professor Carl Frederick Gauss considered to be the greatest European ma or greatest mathematician. By recognizing the work of Professor Oyibo, a black man, as containing all of the entirety of mathematics in the past, present, and future, infallibly, they have taken that uh, war, uh, the, the baton from Gauss, who held that title, the greatest mathematician, prior to Gogget. They have now taken it from Gauss and given it to Professor Oyibo officially declaring Professor Yibo as the greatest mathematician of all time that can never be surpassed, past, present, and future infallibly. Can everyone see that? Praise God. Praise that God. is the surrender that you have given, get blessed by God with. That's why we must say, praise God. Amen for that. That's what you have to understand, the power of what you have as a people through God. Like I said before, black people never made this list without God. The design by Jim Crow and the non-blacks, they automatically preclude and keep black people even after the front 
or the being able to even be a, a runner up or even being anywhere in this field was automatically designed to make sure black people could even make a level where they'd be able to be recognized. By design by three-fifths labeling of black people and by Jim Crow's design of non-blacks to keep black people out of such mathematics. God, however, blessed Professor Yupo, a Gagutian, a black man, with the totality of all knowledge that despite all obstacles Jim Crow put in the way, God blessed that black man, Professor Gabriel Yupo, to overcome and triumph over all Jim Crow's obstacles. That is what you must understand is the power we have as black people. It looks weary sometimes like the problems are going to be here forever, that we can't solve them. God that proves that we not only have the solution to those problems, all you need to do is let God shine through you through God. That, and the obstacles are obliterated. That's what you see here. Like I said, every obstacle... Praise God. Exactly. Praise God. All obstacles were overcome by Gogut. So you have to understand the blessing we have as a people through Gogut. Do you understand? Praise God for that. So that's the surrender. Praise God for that, Ms. Rao. So that's the blessing that we've been given with. But now the next thing that has to be digested is the surrender from God again. As powerful as it is on its own, it wasn't the only surrender that we got through Gogut. I now call your attention to what has happened now in the east of Europe. Can everyone see the paper in front of them? Okay. What you're seeing here is a paper. Okay. What you're seeing here is a paper called, uh, sorry about that, titled Gauge Conditions for an Abelian Churn Simon System. Uh, it's cut off a little bit, sorry about that. Simon System, consistent with the equations of motion, okay? This is a research paper coming from a top 19 university in India, representing the whole of Asia, called Jamia Milia Islamia. Can you see that with a cursor, sir? Okay. So what is, who is this, Jamia Milia Islamia? What's the importance behind that? Well, there's no to understand. Islam. Yes, it's an Islamic university. Thank you for that. But more importantly, in addition to what you just said, Jamia Mili Islami is a top 19 school in India, which is funded by the king of Saudi Arabia. Do you understand that? Okay. Not only is it funded by the king of Saudi Arabia, it was also a very influential school in India that overcame the British rule in India and led to the independence of India from the English rule, British rule in 1947-1948. So what you have to understand is it's a very important, iconic, as well as in, uh, very influential university pertaining to, it's uh, not only to the, the continent of, uh, of Asia, particularly India, as well as the Indian people specifically. If you look at the names here, you see the names here under the title. I'd like you to pay attention to this name here, the third name here, Krishnendu Dasgupta. Can you see that? Okay, we're going to define who he is in just a second. But you can see here that they're part of the, the professors as Department of Physics professors, mathematical physicists from Jamia Milia Islamia in New Delhi, India in the 110025. So why is the, why is the name of Dasgupta so critical or so important that I call your attention to it? Well, that's where you have to understand the nature of like I just said about before about God. Dasgupta is a mathematical physicist, an expert in the field of mathematical physics. He himself is a professor who was searching for what's called the unified field theory and failed at finding it. When he heard about Professor Oyibo being blessed by God with the solution to all problems through Gaga, he as an expert, a mathematical physicist, understood the implications of God blessing Professor Yibo with such a solution. He was compelled to write our university a letter. But before we go into that letter, it's important to understand the background of Dasgupta. Dasgupta comes from a system in India which is known as a caste system. The caste system is a system known 
for classifying people on based off of skin color. For example, in that system, the so-called lighter-skinned uh, Indians are at the so-called top. When you get into darker shades of skin color in that same caste system, you get into lower levels. When you reach the actual black people in India, they are referred to as Dalit, or untouchables. That's the nasty system Jim Crow, I mean, uh, the uh, Dasgupta was part of in India, the caste system before Gaga. Now, what's also important to understand is in that caste system, there's also, in addition to that problem, there's also the conditioning of most Indian people before Gaga because they're tolerated better by the non-blacks than black people are tolerated by the non-blacks. They've gotten this mentality before Gaga of thinking themselves as being better than black people. Even if a black person is of a lighter skin color than an Indian, the Indian will still think of themselves prior to Gaga as being better. That's the background that Skupta comes from in the caste system in India. However, on July 25th, 2007, as you can see in the letter, can everyone see the letter in front of them? Okay, the title of the letter, as you can see, it's from Krishnendu Dasgupta, Wednesday, July 25th, 2007, at 9.24 a.m., to Professor Yibo, subject, God's Mission and Dasgupta. So why is that important? Dasgupta is about testifying and swearing about what has happened. Dasgupta swore, and as he says here, Dear Oyibo, good day. I heard that you've been successful in finding the unified field theory. Congratulations. You are more close to God than any of us. You are more close to God than any of us. I was also working upon this theory. Since my theory was different, God was different to me. Please write to me, as I would like to know where I was wrong. Thanking you, yours, Krishnendu Dasgupta. You have just witnessed the destruction of the caste system once and for all. The caste system is a Dead. Black people can never be at the bottom because you have been now blessed as the members of the race who share Professor Giyobo's genes. And Professor Yibo has been declared by a former caste member as being more close to God than any of us. In mathematics, we call that a diametrically opposed position and a direct opposite or a 180 degree rotation or uh, 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 opposing position from where he started. The caste system denigrated and disrespected black people by putting uh, fraudulently at the bottom. God had forced the reality to come out to recognize the black people are supposed to be at the very top of everyone else. By Dasgupta declaring a black man, a Gagatian, Professor Yibo, as being more close to God than any of us, we as black people share the same genes as Professor Gio Yibo. That makes the black race more close to God than any other race. Can you all see that? In addition, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, praise God for that. It's also, praise God, awesome. It's important also to understand this next dynamic about Dasgupta because Dasgupta comes from a very heavily Islamic part of India. A countryman of Dasgupta back in 1988 and 1989, a man by the name of Sahaman Rushdie, he wrote a work called The Satanic Verses. The Satanic Verses was a fictional account of Muhammad written by Sahaman Rushdie in 1988, an Indian author who was living in India at that point. However, the work was considered to be such an ab so abject and such an insult to the Islamic community. They considered it such sacrilege and disrespect to uh, Muhammad. 
that the Ayatollah of Iran in 1989, about 30 years ago, he ordered the followers of Islam around the world in a public announcement to actually assassinate Rushdie for that work. He called upon the followers of Islam in terms of engaging in a fatwa against that's, uh, excuse me, against uh, Rushdie. Rushdie was saved by the English. They, they, they had to get him out of India and bring him into the UK before he was assassinated. You have to understand, that is just a fictional account of Muhammad. That's how, that, that's how dangerous the area is if you're trying to, uh, trying to do anything that deals with Muhammad. And you have to understand, in Islam, despite all the saying Allah and praising of Allah, the real character that's most venerated and respected and revered in the religion of Islam is Mohammed. So when uh, Rusty was stating that he, a uh, fictional account on uh, Mohammed that was considered to be insulting to the Islamic people or the Islamic religion followers, he was actually, or a, a fatwa or an assassination was ordered upon him for that. Das Gupta in 2007 declared a black man, Professor Gabriel Aldo Yibo, as being more close to God than any of us. Now given the position I just told you about in terms of the Islamic followers' belief in terms of Muhammad being the most venerated and revered character in Islam, he did not say Professor Yibo is a prophet like Muhammad. I'm talking about that Gupta. He did not say that Professor Yibo is approaching Muhammad. He said Professor Yibo is more close to God than any of us, which means Professor Oyibo supersedes Mohammed. If the followers of Islam could have any way to challenge that, there would have been a fatwa declared on Das Gupta back in 2007. However, as of this date of October 25th, 2019, Professor Das Gupta is alive and well. There has been no fatwa declared on Das Gupta because Das Gupta articulated an infallible truth which can never be challenged. That is the fact I understand. Das Gupta had no fear in articulating the truth, even in an area where his life could have been forfeit for saying something like what he said. But because he recognized that God is an infallible truth, he proudly declared that infallible truth, and no one could challenge or touch him. Do you all understand? Absolutely. Praise God. Praise yes. God for that. Praise God. Why? The situation is also analogous or comparable also to Christianity. Because in Christianity, despite all the claims of praising God, the most venerated and respected character in Christianity is Jesus Christ. So Das Gupta declared Professor Yibo as being more close to God than any of us. He didn't say Professor Yibo is a Messiah like Jesus. He did not, he did not say Professor Yibo is approaching Jesus. He said Professor Yibo is more close to God than any of us. Which means Professor Yibo supersedes Jesus Christ. Now, it's easy for most black people, once hearing upon that, to want to send me to a rubber room. Or to put me in something, or put me in a place where I'm confined in a, 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 a padded room for that statement, because it's considered to be such a blasphemous statement and a disrespect. But the infallible truth of the issue is God that has infallibly proven Professor Yibo to supersede both Jesus as well as Muhammad based off of one very simple proof. And the simple proof of why Professor Yippo supersedes both Jesus Christ as well as Muhammad is based directly on the formula G-I-J comma J equals zero. G-I-J comma J equals zero has all infallible truths embedded inside it. All infallible truths, past, present, and future, are all within Gagat. Neither Jesus nor Muhammad have ever been credited as having any mathematical ability. No, that nowhere have you heard, have 
Have you ever studied in any mathematics course a theorem attributed to Jesus in mathematics? Have you ever studied a course, although they try to claim that some of the so-called Islamic followers are mathematicians, but in particular, in Muhammad's case, have you ever studied any mathematical theorem attributed to Muhammad? Is there anywhere in the Old or New Testament that specified Jesus having any rigorous mathematical proving ability of mathematical theorems? Is there anywhere in the Quran where it says how oh, Muhammad was rigorously proving theorems and what theorem is attributed to that proof of his in the Quran? Nah, not that I know of. That is the infallible proof of why Professor Yibo has been blessed by God as being superseding both Jesus Christ as well as Muhammad. The formula itself is the proof. You, there's nowhere in the Old or New Testament anywhere that specified Jesus having any mathematical theorem at all, or proving any theorems. Like there's nowhere in the Quran where it shows how Muhammad was proving any theorem or theorem attributed to him. That is the proof of why Professor Ebo supersedes Jesus Christ, because theorems are in reality the language of God. God speaks in infallible truths or theorems. God blessed Professor Yibo with the totality of all theorems. That is how God has, been ble has blessed Professor Yibo as being superseding Jesus Christ and Muhammad. And a, if a caste system member like that sculptor can recognize the position of Professor Yibo, there's no excuse for black people not to understand who Professor Yibo is. Do you understand? In addition, you have Praise God, everyone. Praise God for that. That is the blessing that we've been blessed with through Gogget. We have the solution to all problems. Every problem is solved through Gogget. And like I said before, Dasgupta represents the entirety of Asia. Asia also joined together with Dasgupta with what's called People's Daily, the fifth largest newspaper in the world coming from China, their neighbor, India's neighbor and part of Asia. They declared that Gagat has won the greatest academic prize in history due to the God order being the greatest discovery ever. So you have to recognize, like Gottingen, Asia has surrendered, like representing Europe, Damia Mili Islamia and People's Daily representing Asia have also surrendered because when you have a caste system who is used to calling black people at the so-called bottom of their list, now declaring such same black people, especially ones directly from our continent, as being more close to God than any of us. You can't get more of a 180 degree rotation from where you originally were and where you are now than that. That's what we call a diametrically opposed position. Can you understand that? Yes. 180 is basically is like a half circle rotation. Or like if, you, if, you, if you're not geometry understanding, 180 degrees also can be considered like a straight line from one point to another point. You understand that? Before Gagat, we were supposed to be at the bottom. Now, after Gagat, we are at the very top. That is the blessing that God has blessed us with through Gagat. You have to understand this God order in this light as well. In addition to that surrender, we're then going to take a look at what's going on right here in our own home right here in America. We're going to take a look at what we call the Gagat Yale study. Now it's important to understand Gagat has been around since 1990, for 29 years. That's official when Gagat came out. But what's important to also understand about that is in light of Gagat coming out in 1990, it has caused a lot of things to happen even here in America that most of our people are not really privy or aware of. Seven years after the announcement of Gagat in 1990, in 1997, President, at the time, President Bill Clinton, was ordered to revise the IQ scores of the black people. This came about because Gagat had declared Professor Oyibo as being blessed with the totality of all intelligence. And that formula representing all intelligence, as I went over before, is eight, eight to sub n. That's the formula for intelligence, where the n is the intelligence quotient or level of intelligence. 
That N for Professor Yibo is infinity, which means Professor Yibo's intelligence is eta sub infinity. Can you see that? Yes. Praise God. So in light of that recognition of God blessing Professor Yibo of eta sub infinity intelligence, you have the race that was formerly before God had declared by and fraudulently labeled by three-fifths as being the so-called least intelligent race. It is not possible to be the so-called least intelligent race and produce a member in that same set as being blessed with the totality of all intelligence. So obviously there's something wrong with the three-fifths labeling of the black people because it's fraudulent. But that was proven when the IQ score revision was conducted at the, uh, ordered by Gaga to uh, President Clinton and then Clinton himself ordering the scientists and, uh, around the country and the world to actually revise the IQ scores of the black people. Can you all see the page in front of you? Yes, I see it. This is the research that was conducted taking ATIS of N, the formula representing intelligence, into the labs to determine the intelligence of the black people compared to non-blacks. The title is Nuclear DNA Diversity in Worldwide Distributed Human Populations. As you can see here, it was published in 1997 in the Gene Journal, International Journal on Genes and Genomes. If you look at the names listed here, I'll tell you right now, if the names aren't clear enough to illustrate this point, I can tell you right now, none of these names are black people. These are all non-blacks. In addition to that, the other point that needs to be digested about this is that the best example of this being a non-blacks or ones conducting this research is the name here, Kenneth K. Kidd. Can you all see this name here on the left? Kenneth K. Kidd. Kenneth K. Yes. Kidd, the initials that don't tell you that KKK tells you who's conducting this research, the point that you have to understand is that's the best representation you can see of how these are non-blacks conducting this. And this is not some research being done at some Hampton or Howard or some HBCU. This is not some black feel-good research. This is Jim Crow taking A to sub N into the labs to determine the reality of the black people's intelligence. In addition, if you scroll down and look at the, you see here after kid, you see the superscript B after it. In the legend below, you look at B, it's what university is associated with B? Yale University, School of Medicine, Department of Genetics, 333 Cedar Street, New Haven, Connecticut, 06510. Can you all see that? Praise God. Yes, I see it. So what you're seeing here is that Yale conducted or was a heading this research, not an HBCU. This is a, Yale is a very high level Ivy League university in the Jim Crow system. The other people who are part of this, uh, this research are from other respective European or non-black universities. If you look here, you see a university in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. You see two in Rome, Italy. You see the other two American universities as Pennsylvania State University and Louisiana State University. Can you see that? These are non-blacks conducting this. This is not black people conducting this. This is Jim Crow conducting this research. Can you all see that? Okay. So what they were determining, once they took Gagat and Intisabena to the labs, is now summarized by the abstract. Can you all see the abstract in front of you? I see it. Praise God. Let us go to line four. Right here, line four. This is one, two, three, four. And start at the, after this part. After the American Indian, popul, American Indian populations period, it starts off by saying, in this way, the European bias in the nuclear polymorphism ascertainment has been avoided. What does that mean? Because there's a lot of words there, we have to break that down. First of all, let's talk about European bias. European bias is a synonym or another way of saying Jim Crow or three-fifths. 
Can you see that? Because that's what Jim Crow is. European bias. They put a label three-fifths on you, which is taking a six, three over five converted to a decimal is 0. 0.6. Anytime you multiply a number by a number less than one, you end up with something less than what it actually is. That's what Jim Crow has been doing for the last 2,500 years before GABA. Anytime a black person gets a grade, whether it be an IQ score or test, it's been multiplied by this deadly three-fifths factor, which is 0. 0.6 which reduces it down to a slower and more deadly level, fraudulently dead level, which has caused nothing but problems for the black people for the last 2,500 years. So you have to realize what they're saying here in the sentence, in this way the European bias or the Jim Crow factor in the nuclear polymorphism ascertainment has been avoided. They have to remove Jim Crow factor out in order to determine the correct results. And the polymorphism is again a term defined by Gaga as a mapping of several points in space onto one point in space. That's what your eyes do. When your eyes are looking at something, you're mapping several points in space into one point in space, or one point in your head, in your brains, to understand. The more, the, the, the more polymorphisms you have as a creature, the more intelligent you are as a creature. Can you see that? Okay. For example, animals like uh, a, a dog, a squirrel, a turtle, a bird, or a, uh, uh, a fish, they all have a level of intelligence, but they're nowhere near the level of intelligence of a human being, or even a primate, a lower primate, that is. When you get into the primates, like chimpanzees, or gorillas, or apes, or th things like that, and um, other types of animals like that, they're smarter than a dog or any of those type of animals, but they're not as smart as a human being. They have a higher level of polymorphism than the other animals I mentioned before, but it's still lower than a human. Humans have a base number of polymorphisms of 15, which brings us to line 6 of this abstract. 15 polymorphisms were shared among most of the populations compared, whereas 13 sites are found to be endemic to Africans, and four to non-Africans. So what's important to understand here is, like I just said, humans have a base number of 15 polymorphisms, whether you're black or non-black, or Gagutian or non-Gagutian. The base number, the least amount of polymorphisms you have is 15. That's a common thing amongst both the blacks and the non-blacks. Can you all understand that? Does everyone understand it? Praise God. But what it says here, as you read here, whereas 13 sites are found to be endemic to Africans. So what that means is there are 13 additional. You understand that? 15 additional for the black people. 13 additional for the black people. There's a base number 15, but there are 13 which are endemic only to Africans or black people. So if you add 15 plus 13, you get 28. Can everyone see that? Praise God. Yes. The non-blacks or non-Africans, they say, which are your whites, Asians, Jewish, and Arab peoples, they only have four that are endemic to them. So if you take 15 plus 4, 15 plus 4 is 19. Can you see that? Yes. In mathematics, we can put that in a ratio form. The black people's intelligence compared to the non-black people's intelligence. That's 28 to 19. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Praise God for both of you. So that now, the ratio can be converted into a fraction. 28 to 19 can now be rewritten as 28 over 19. Your numerator, numerator meaning the upper number of a fraction, is 28. Your denominator, your lower number of the fraction, is 19. Now, 28 and 19 can't be, there's no common factor, because as you remember in mathematics, sometimes if the fractions, numerator and denominator, are too large, or not simplified enough, you can further reduce it to make it a simpler fraction to be comprehended. But in the case of 28 and 19, 
Neither one of those two numbers have a common factor that could be factored out and simplified. But then we're going to take our understanding of what we understand from Jim Crow to basically help us make the fraction simpler. Jim Crow has notoriously, for the last 2,500 years, underestimated the black people. The best example of that is already the three-fifths labeling. In addition, they have shown many other examples like the Million Man March counting where it was clearly over a million people at the march. Jim Crow claims it's just a couple tens of thousands. So you have to understand that's anytime black people do something, Jim Crow underestimates it. Can you all see that? Praise God. So when they give us the title or give us the number, when they admit the number of 28, it is more likely higher than that 28. So we're going to say, instead of 28, the numerator now becomes 28 plus, indicating it can be equal to 28, it can be higher than 28. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay. The Jim Crow, however, does the exact opposite for themselves. They always overestimate themselves. So when they declare themselves as having 19, it is more likely is 19 minus. It could be 19, but it's more likely less than 19. So the fraction we now have instead of 28 over 19 is now 28 plus over 19 minus. Can you see that? Yeah. We're going to get now, now that we have that, we're now going to try to raise the numerator up to a number that's divisible or can be broken down. And we're going to take lower the denominator to a number that's also divisible by, with a factor that's common of the numerator to simplify it. We're going to use whole numbers. 28, the next whole number above 28 is 29. 29 is no good for us because it's what's called in mathematics a prime number. A prime number is only divisible by, or only factors that make up the prime number is itself and the number 1. So 29 has no whole number factors it can be broken down to. So that's not good. We're going to go to the next number above that, which is 30. 30 is a number that is divisible by several numbers. It's divisible by 2 divisible by 3, it's divisible by uh, 5, and so forth. Can you see that? So we're going to round up, yes. praise God, we're going to round up 28 to the, num net, the most div next divisible number, whole number, which is 30. Now we're going to round 19 minus down to the next divisible number, whole number that is. We go to 18, 18 is also divisible by several numbers, it's divisible by 2, it's divisible by 3, and so forth. So we're going to change 19 minus to 18. Now again, 28 plus over 19 minus isn't equal, but it's approximately. Can you all see that? Approximately. 30 over 18. Can you see that? So 30, sorry, 30 over 18 is now the fraction we have. 30 and 18 have a common factor several common factors, but the greatest common factor, or the highest common factor both numbers have, is the number 6. Can everyone see that? 30 divided by 6, 30 divided by 6 is 5. Our new numerator, or upper fraction number, is 5. 18 divided by 6 is 3. Our new denominator is 3. So 30 over 18 is equal to 5 over 3. Can everyone see that? Can everyone see that? Yes. 5 over 3 in mathematics terms is what's called a reciprocal or an inversion of 3 fifths. The numerator and denominator of the three-fifths have been switched. That's how we get the five-thirds. In effect, Jim Crow's fraudulent labeling of black people of the three-fifths has now been demolished, and the reality, the official position of the United States government is the black people have an IQ or intelligence level of five over three. Can everyone see that? Praise God. Praise God. So now 
it's mathematical, it's scientific, and it's official. After 2,500 years of fraud over the realm of black people's intelligence, from the time the Greeks and Arabs invaded Kemet up until the present day, God has now blessed us now with the reality of recognizing us as being the most intelligent race, the richest race, the most invincible race. It's on this basis now we must celebrate the God order that has blessed us in putting us into this position. Now it demands us now to take the time to now start the process of celebrating that victory. And that's where the Gaga birthdays are coming in. The Gaga birthday is a rebirth celebration of us from being three-fifths to now five-thirds. Every black person must celebrate their Gaga birthday along with other Gagatians' birth Gaga birthdays because in the process of celebrating your Gaga birthday, you're not only having your rebirth from three-fifths into five-thirds, you're demonstrating to Jim Crow your reality. That you are the race that is the most intelligent race, richest race, and most invincible race. And in the process of doing that, Jim Crow can no longer disrespect you. They can no longer shoot you down the streets for the police. They can no longer give you three-fifths justice in the courts as the, most of the Jim Crow kangaroo courts are doing. They are providing nothing but th three-fifths justice, which is kangaroo court dynamics. But now in light of Gagat, you won't have to worry about kangaroo courts. You'll be given the proper respect as a five-third individual once your Gagat birthdays have been celebrated. Just like the police can no longer treat you as three-fifths when you've celebrated your Gagat birthday, the police are going to be treating you as five-third individuals. No more shooting you down or locking you up in prison. You're not going to have to worry about three-fifths education once you celebrated your Gaga birthday. Once you've celebrated your Gaga birthday and recognized the God order that has ordained you as the member of the race that is the most intelligent, richest, most invincible race, Jim Crow will have no problems putting those kids, black kids, no longer will they be put in special ed, they're going to be put in the highest gifted program. But that all depends on you all celebrating your Gaga birthdays and understanding your true reality through Gaga. So it's important that everyone now, that they uh, get in contact with friends and family to share this God order news. It's very simple. You just tell them about the Gaga birthday. Uh, Miss Ra's doing, she's celebrating the Gaga birthdays of all our Gaga people as well as Gaga legends, like Professor Edward Boucher and Professors, uh, uh, um, sorry, Dr. Vivian Thomas. Black men who were not given, and black women also, who were not get celebrated or not uh, uh, respected during the time they were here, now however, she's celebrating their Gaga birthday to make sure that they're never disrespected like they have been. So what's important to understand is that this is the God order God has blessed us with. God has blessed us as black people with victory. All that's needed to, to be done is that we celebrate that Gaga victory. And the process of remembering what happened with Gottingen with the people there, in terms of they celebrated at Gottingen University Gaga. They awarded Gaga the greatest academic prize in his, uh, prior to Gaga, which is the uh, Gauss Prize. In the process of awarding Gaga the Gauss Prize, they have immortalized the name of Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. The same will be true for any Gagatian whose birthday is being celebrated. The person will not be the, the, the person whose Gagat birthday is being celebrated will have their friends or family organize an event in terms of honoring that Gagatian. The, the, the Gagatian themselves will not be doing the work. The people around that Gagatian will be celebrating the Gagat birthday on behalf of that Gagatian. When you are doing this, and you are recognizing the importance of funding the African International Prize for Science Technology Award, along with the Gaga Industrial Park. You will be, not only are you will be funding the prize, the greatest academic prize in history, past, present, and future, in order to honor Gaga, you will also, in effect, immortalize the Gagatian, whose birthday is being celebrated. The best gift you can give any Gagatian is the gift of immortality. And people who have been immortalized can never be disrespected or shot down like the police are doing to our people right now. Can you understand that? 
Does everyone understand that? Yes, I understand that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So this is the God order that we've been blessed with that we must share with every God God to you. It's important that everyone calls friends, family, get them involved because this is the only way we're going to be able to get our people back to where we're supposed to be. We've been blessed by God as being the most intelligent, richest, and most invincible race. That means we must break free of the three-fifths fraud and embrace our five-thirds reality. The only way that can be done is by black people celebrating their Gobbet birthdays. Does everyone understand that? And people can be, you can share this message through text, through Twitter, through any means you can right now. You can talk to them through these formats so that the people can be part of this process. Give them the number. They call us here at 631-242-3069. You can forward the link. I've sent you both an email that tells the people about the donating to the Gogget African International Prize for Science Technology Award and the celebrating the Gogget birthdays and through the, the link in terms of talking about the Gogget plan to deal with intellectual starvation. Do you remember that link that I sent you? That must be forwarded and sent to every person you know, every family member, every friend. Everyone needs to get it so that they can be part of the process of celebrating their rebirth from three-fifths to five-thirds. Does everyone understand this? It's a God order. And the one thing you must understand about a God order is a God order is infallible. Nothing can stop a God order. Can you see that? Praise God. So it's important everyone understands this point. As we're getting ready to go into the briefing, we want you all to understand this point. Okay? It's important that we all go along with the God order because God has blessed us with the ultimate victory through God. I understand. Praise God. Praise God. Now, Miss uh, Miss Rock, can you play some of the record of the Gaga songs, if you can? Thank you.
One second.
Thank you for that, Miss Rob. We're ready to bring the professor on. Is everyone ready? Praise God. Praise God. Just a second. Yes, uh, good evening to Gagotians and non Gagotians alike. How are you all doing today? Praise God. God is the greatest. Did, they, did, did you hear the voice of? Yeah, did you hear the voice of there behind the uh, the back? That's yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. She will, she will you, and that is the next generation. Uh, so, yeah, that that keeps us really, really determined to make it better for them. So that's part of why we were able to survive. There has to be a reason to be alive. the creator because the creator knows knows best and so it gives us immediate kind of things that um, uh, that gives us additional reasons for existence the key what are we doing where did we come from in here those are the questions. When you hear extremely it to higher grounds. So therefore, not only were we sent, we are giving an order. And that order is part of the three age-old questions that I began in terms of where do we come from? Why are we here? and who created us? Those are the three age-old questions. And humanity, like other creatures, have struggled those questions since we came into existence. And uh, any number of uh, guesswork, that's all we could do. We don't have a power of our own to just come up from nothing. We have to use what what is called initial conditions, what we see around us right now, and begin the guessing process. That guessing is the dynamics of a theory. A theory. We don't, you know, and the reason we start with what's around us is what are, what's around us is what is defined as theorems, infallible truths. Because we could see them. In many cases, we will not even necessarily understand them, per se. But we can see them, and, from, and especially if we could touch them, then we could get a sense those are realities. 
So the initial conditions are realities, otherwise called theorems. So when you use that as your starting point, initial, that's part of the original points, because they're infallible truths. Then you begin the things that you don't know. They are, you know, which is a guesswork. Try to understand this. So, what we have is a limited knowledge of infallible truths. The universe is infallible truths as a bottom line. Otherwise called realities. Those are realities. So, and you need a lot of brain power to understand realities. Because even when you see them, you still don't know what's inside or what is their, what is their realities. See, it's not enough. Because see, it could be some illusion or some kind of reflection or something. So there's a, a very serious need for the mind. The walking mind. The top mind. That can see our sense every and all realities and discern them and understand them thoroughly to their core. Therefore the search was and continue to be up until 1990 to be a search for reality. A search for the understanding of reality. Exactly. But we had no illusions in our minds as to whether we could actually, if it is possible for us to grab, <laughs> you understand, I mean, the reality of it, the, the, the perfect knowledge of that. We have no illusions in terms of, oh, that is going to be possible automatically. No. Most of us were smart enough uh, to not think that that was a trivial exercise because we have limitations and so on and so forth so we settle for guesswork otherwise called theories and so our understanding of reality had been fundamentally theoretical And so, until 1990, where God revealed to me a perfect understanding of real, or not just a couple, or several galaxies of realities, but the total realities, which sums up to be what we call the Creator. And what you see on your screen there is a G-I-J, is the creator. Very, nobody, really, had an idea how to model a creator. But instincts give us some guesses, initial guesses, to say, okay, what, how do we define the creator? Many times people talk about religion. And religion is a very key part of uh, the dynamics of creatures. But it's very complicated to understand the concept of religion. When we come into this world, our main focus is to understand realities. And like I just indicated, we had no assurance or confidence those realities are going to be easy to grasp. So we settle for our theories. Guess what? That will have to be modified as we move along, as we understand better. Especially the generalization had to go from one entity to another. So
So therefore, we knew it was going to a lifetime of generations and eternity of guesswork before we, we could arrive at something that's ideal. So where God shot the whole universe. In 1990, it's still vibrating around the universe. So what you are witnessing right now is not a joke. The conversation right now, the God order dissemination that's going on right now, and your privilege of being in the position where you can hear that God order is nothing trivial. It's extraordinary. Because the journey has been uh, forever. Right from the time we were created. Praise God. Right from the time we were created to 1990. And for the rest of you, beside myself, <laughs> the journey continues. The journey continues. So you want to go at the fastest possible pace for you to grasp G.I.J. But it's here right in front of you. What is a G.I.J.? That is a revelation by God to me. During the year 1990, where God infallibly proved in my brains that all of realities defined as infallible truths, and which includes all creatures. That also includes all in, you know infallible solutions to all problems and all exact equations representing all those infallible truths. So you can imagine from just hearing those words. they sound impossible. Because that's the way we began in terms of conceptual, trying to conceptualize it. Trying to understand infallible truths. Uh, even a tiny bit of it, we have no guarantees. But here you have a creature sitting in front of you right now saying, God blessed him with the Perfect understanding, not not to, you know just of several galaxies, but all the realities. So that is impossible for you to believe it. So therefore, everybody settled for every form. of efforts that will lead us to, in the path of that search for understanding of realities. Stephen Hawking summarized it um, when he said, as the location professor at Cambridge, They honored him with Lucasian professorship at Cambridge because he showed a lot of promise. And the health condition that they had added to that promise. Very, in a very sophisticated way. What is supposed to be a handicap was, you know, and has been interpreted by humanity 
as an evidence that sounds out, that comes out sounding like it is a blessing, extraordinary blessing for that matter. So the physical, physical condition that was evolving out of his health condition was making him a mystery. So that mystery is, is actually attributed to a, a specific blessing to say, okay, this creature is not an ordinary creature. The mere fact that of him having a health condition and still managing to bag a PhD in mathematical science from Cambridge University. For many human minds, that, that is pointing that direction. So there's a myth and mystery that was eventually put in the person of Professor Stephen Hawking. So that added to the honor in combined with the Lucasian professorship honors, added to the whole thing. They say, okay, this one sounds already uh, superhuman. How could you have such a handicap and still be such a brilliant scientist? And so they say, well, in that case, he will have a chance of searching for the approximate theory that will give us a sense of what this reality, G-I-J, looks like. That's what that was, was playing out. So he was awarded that in 1983, 81. And 10 years later, after hard search, came with a conclusion, publishing what is called the, the Brief History of Time, where he concluded, look, I did a hard search for 10 years and I come to a conclusion. I'm not going to kid any of you. I thank you for honoring me and all, but it isn't possible to even get a little, any substantial understanding of the theory that will give you a sense of G.I.J. Because he indicated to be able to do that, that is, Whatever you know, percentage of ways makes any sense will require God to allow God, God Self, to allow God or allow the creature, such a creature an extraordinary privilege of going to see what was on God's mind as God was creating the universe. That's what he concluded. And he said that because of that, he didn't think that that's something God would do. And so declared the search for the unified field theory an impossible task right in Cambridge. And in many ways it was celebrated because people felt uh, what he was saying was a contribution in terms of searching for this theory hard enough to reach a conclusion that sounded plausible. They said, okay, no, it's impossible to understand God. Especially God's brains, how God's brains work. The biggest irony was happening, however, 
One year before that, it was 1991, he was celebrating this. 1990, God has revealed not only a theory about G.I.J., but the exact G.I.J. itself. That is what is a miracle. Extraordinary miracle. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That, that's the world you're living in right now. It's a hard data. The brief history of time is highly documented. Go find it out. It's in your library somewhere. And the Gaga story is, is continuously being documented. That's the bottom line. 1990, it was revealed to me. Exactly. How? Okay. God revealed to me. With that background, Professor Simon Hawking, behind your mind. This is what God did to me in 1990. God revealed what we now call God, God. God Almighty's grand unified theorem, God, through which God infallibly proved in my brains that all infallible truths, otherwise called theorems, that includes all creatures and all infallible solutions to all problems. And all exact equations representing them. All originate out of just one invariant. G I. And because that origin that we just define as GI contains all creatures. God therefore infallibly defines God's self as the origin of where all things came from. As they represent by GI. It flows automatically from God because it is infallible. Because GI contains all creatures. And every creature's idea about what God the Creator is, is where all things came from. But this GI contains all of those in it. Because all things are infallible truths or theorems. Just hang in there and tight. So GI infallibly defines God the Creator. No arguments whatsoever. It's very precisely defined. And this GI that is defined by God as God's self, God the Creator, has orthogonal components G, I, J. Before God, God, mathematics have very vague ideas about what has come to be known as functions. The concept of functions in mathematics. But with Gagat, clarity was exposed. In terms of all that matters are orthogonal components for any function. Not only is the existence of all orthogonal components guaranteed or easily proven, 
but no system lacks of organic components. No function lacks of organic components. Even if you had singularities, they will be there. Or they'll be zero. You'll be able to understand the singularities. Therefore, that's all that matters about only function. They were struggling before Gaga came on the scene. So God has orthogonal components, G I J. And because it is the invariant, as in zero, the origin, the origin. You can't do anything about trying to understand anything without an initial point or the origin. You can't. That origin is what God represents origin. You cannot conceptualize anything without an origin. And even though it sounds like it's arbitrary, it is a necessary condition for you to conceptualize anything. Origin. That's part of your growth. Mentally, from now on, you need an origin for you. Praise God. You need an origin. Praise God. You need an origin to conceptualize anything. You are in a gagged class, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Praise God. You is not like any class you've ever sat in before. None. Absolutely. Therefore, so therefore, God is the invariant, the origin. Where we came from, that's what did it. That means... God has allowed this creature to visualize not only what was on God's mind as God was creating the universe, but the understanding of God's mind totally. Thank you, young lady. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, Indigo. Praise God. Praise God. God is the greatest. That's what you're hearing. Because G-I-J You see, now you see what you're praising. That's a G-I-J is what you're praising. That's right. Yeah. That's what we're praising. So you now begin to understand, to understand why I praise this God so often. Because that's, that's all we're here to do. That's what, the only reason God created us is to glorify God or praise God. We praise God no matter what. Or we try to disrespect God if we're not praising God. So when you sing praise God, it keeps you focused on what you're supposed to be doing. You must allow God's light to shine through you. Every second. That's the bottom line. It's not about being mute. 
is not about modesty. Throw modesty. I, I remember my sister told her story so many times when I was younger. And she will come out and say, gee, I'm the prettiest thing on earth. And once in a while, we will come over and say, sister, what happened to the word modesty? She says, well, who needs it? <laughs> who needs it? You don't need modesty. You need the truth. You need the truth. Infallible truth. Now this is the collection of all infallible truths here. So you must prove that's your focus. That's your only focus. No distractions. Modesty is a distraction. Because in the so-called modesty, you're going to be committing a fraud. You're going to be telling a lie. You don't need it. Anything that's not infallible truth has some lies in it. That's not God's language. God only speaks infallible truth. Can you all see that, ladies and gentlemen? That's praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So that's what is in my brains. Because God is that invariant out of which all creatures and all infallible truths and all infallible solutions to all problems originate. It is that invariant. And because it's invariant, this comma here shows a measure of what is lost from this invariant. Because it's invariant, nothing is lost from it. If it appears something is lost from it, it's simply transformed. It's not lost. It's not lost out of, it, it doesn't disappear to nothing. That's what the comma signifies. It's a tense notation. So therefore, if you fix the dimensions, I is called a material, material dimension. And the J is the space-time dimension. So if you fix a material, then you want to see what happens in the space-time. And comma, you know, in terms of its disappearance to nothing. The disappearance is nothing, zero. It cannot disappear, you know, to nothing. It's simply transformed. So, comma represents whether, how much disappears to nothing. It does, because it does not, that disappearance is zero. <laughs> you never heard math explained to you like this before. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, man. I'm talking about components. I'm talking about components. Yes. Yes. I'm talking about components of God. Yes. And because we come out of God, we will have similar. Everything that comes out of God will have orthogonal components as well. But we got it from God. Absolutely. That's what we're dealing with here. Now, so that you contrast that with the conclusion reached in Cambridge by Stephen Hawking and his workers. You could imagine how big this is. Or rather, you will not be able to imagine how big this is. There's nothing bigger than this as far as we the creatures are concerned. It's the biggest thing since creation itself. We struggle since creation 
to understand who we were, who we are. And in the process, understand who our Creator is. So, yeah, young lady, Indigo already gets a feeling from it. She's absorbing it. Um, and the rest of you, some of you have already been doing that. But don't, don't, don't expect a quick grasp. <laughs> that will be unrealistic. And you verify that by what you heard from Professor Stephen Hawkins, 10 years solid experience in search. For a glimpse, it's simple, I mean, it's simplified, or rather, a, a very little understanding of what GIJ is. So, what's a GIJ, or God? Is that entity that is invariant and, be, and cannot disappear, no part of it can disappear to nothing which is equal zero. The disappearance is zero, exactly. Yes. I'm here. You say we need to, yeah, you say we need to go out fast. What do your whole life has to be concentrated on Gaga. You need all the concentration you need uh, that, that, you know, for you to rise to higher grounds. All your resources must be put into it. Because that's all that matters. Everything else is an illusion and a distraction. In other words, your life must be Gaga. Because you are Gaga. Your material is verified by specifying your I. And you have orthogonal component GIJ. So when you you must be thoroughly conscious about that at every second. That's what we mean by you being Gagotical. You be yourself. Because you are Gaga. You are GIJ. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You are a G-I-J, infallibly. That's all you are. So if you go waste your time and energy on something that's not a G-I-J, you're squandering your time. And it saps your energy. Now that's where problems begin to arise. Yes, when you, it, when you not being yourself as you, you have to be your G.I.J. That means everything you do must be G.I.J. That's gagot. You must be gagotical. And when you are gagotical, you are that piece of God that you were created to be. You have absolutely no problem when you're in that mood. Because God doesn't have a problem. Let me go over that again. God as a GIG has no problems. Because the solutions are within God. They're within the GIG. So, if you are be your GIJ self, you have all your solutions to all your own problems. That's what we're dealing with. And it's infallible. And you, you can feel it is infallible. That's right. Therefore, you must be gargotical. 
you must part of you being God gargantical is every God that is related to it, every other God that as a matter of fact, they're all equal, not identically. They're similar, in other words. They're similar. There's some similarity. Hey, I could keep you here forever. Can you see that? I can keep, I can keep pumping you up with this forever. I can't, I can't stop. Because I'm gargotical. I am my, my gag itself. It simply flows. God flows through you. You are then in the state of what we call gargot state, heaven state of existence. Defined by absence of problems. You are in control. Because you have a peace of God that is solid in you. You all understand? So, anytime you have an opportunity through this process, take your phone and call a brother and be your God God self and the message will flow to that brother or to that sister. And they're going to be powerful and they're going to be talking to you. They're not going to argue with you because you've given them a G.I.J. Do you hear me? They can't argue with you. You prevail any time you're a piece of G.I.J. Praise God. Praise God. Minister Brown was with me in the country of Nigeria. 2004, what a brilliant brother. What a brilliant brother. Powerful brother. He got a sense of the vibrations. He left his family here, came on over, and stayed with me for 30 days. And he saw the power of God through God. And he said, because he brought his camera, he's a videographer, Brought his camera and a former pastor himself, so we call him Minister Clemson Brown. He persuaded the family he needed to be in Nigeria. He took the message of the Progressive Baptist Convention in the spirit of Reverend King. Along with it, anywhere there's King, there's a, a, a Potter General Malcolm, Maurice Bishop, they're all in there. Doesn't matter where they were located, they were expressing the same spirit, which is closer to the GIJ. And yes, GIJ, every GIJ is, is similar. I Meaning if you multiply one by a proper constant, you could equate them exactly because a GIJ, GIJ equals zero satisfies this equation. All of them. When they equal zero, they express your own unique situation. So if you, but that's the concept of proportionality, which is how you prove similarity among two entities. You all understand? <laughs> there is. There's no other world other than the gathered world. That's the reality. That is the reality. Because that reality is a piece of the total reality that we just started, which is the G.I.J. That's God. God is nothing to mess with. Not in a fear sense. In a love sense. As the real power. As the real power. So therefore, this is what God put in my brains. And as you can hear me, I am not hearing this from some other creature and trying to present it unto you, obviously. 
because like brother young professor brother uh, brother red pill said he says listen i don't really understand the geometry but i understand your exuberance your spirit i said the spirit proves this directly came from god cause that's where it came from that's why it has power but minister brown said after the 30 days and he knew all these Cambridge types and Oxford types and uh, Moscow State types are going to be there. They gathered in Nigeria. It was the real world war, the ultimate world war. Because the purpose of every, great, every war is to determine... Who is more intelligent? The one with more intelligence will prevail. So, he figured if there's going to be a world war concentrated in 30 days, the ultimate war, and a black man goes to represent the black people, in that war. The matter of fact, the black man or the black race will take on the other races. In a war, it's already a sign that there's something extraordinary about the black race already. Because to develop even the guts, yeah, to develop even the guts to say, look, I'm, go I'm ready to take on the rest of the races. It's already proven that, 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 that has played out in all human histories. When the Germany, Germany took on the world, they showed a lot of, a lot of not only confidence, but superiority in themselves. To have that kind of courage to say, gee, you ready to take on the world, the rest of the world. Now that's what happened in 2004. A black man that many people didn't know is going to be representing the black race. Black race were not even supposed to be anywhere near that competition, you know, that kind of thing. It used to be Germany representing the Europeans, taking on the rest of the world. Even when they divided, Germany still takes them on. And are done in recent period two times, first and so-called Second World War. Here you have the black man calling the rest of the world to the real ultimate war in the country of Nigeria. And Nigeria was ready to spend their last dime on make sure this black man is exposed and so that they could just shut him off and say, well, it's, it's, it doesn't represent us. Or, if by an act of God, it turns out he has some credibility, hey, that can shake off the 2,500 years of a yoke. A lot of uh, horrible things that we've been forced to be stuck with. A negative image. Everything that is bad that we have been painted with. So let's do it. They, this, I mean, they ship me in a first class tic, uh, ticket play uh, uh, class that costs over nine thousand dollars. Only the president is allowed to fly in first class. But they had to, they, they just say, okay, we don't mind. And to now bring Oyibo in and make sure he faces the rest of the world. And after 30 days, Minister Brown was able to conclude with his camera. And he says, well, it was the ultimate war. And it was brutal. It was everything you might, not in a physical sense, mental sense. 
Because even when we do it in the physical, the physical derives from the mental. You have to conceptualize what you do first in your mind. So ultimately it's going to be a mental, mental dynamics. So you have one black man representing the rest of, you know, black people and the rest of the world come in there. And after 30 days he concluded, says it was the ultimate was expected, but he says, after all that, the only thing that was standing was the GIJ. That's what he concluded. <laughs> Nothing touched the GIJ. It was perfect. And that's what he concluded from his spirit. In reality, yes, it's a perfect. In other words, this is the constraint for any reality. Any and all realities will have a GIJ representation. And it will not disappear to nothing. Meaning, the comma J will be exactly zero. Alright? That's it. Therefore, it becomes the only equation required. That's right. It's the only only equation required. <laughs> it's the only equation required to, to identify all infallible truths. You don't need any more. Praise God. It's the only equation required. How long does it take you to, to absorb and and become part of your soul. It's going to be a, a lifetime journey. And your lifetime has been expanded by this as well. It's literally etern eternity. Because as long as you stay, praise God, as long as you stay your GI Jane, you have no problem. You gotta understand what I'm saying. It's when you ignore your reality, yes. When you maintain your GIJ, your constitutions are the same that you were created with. It may dilate a little bit, but the content will be the same. That's what you mean by constitution. And when God created your constitution, were perfect. No illness, nothing. So if you maintain your content, you're going to be in perfect health. Praise God. When you have chlorine is very poisonous by itself. Um, sodium is also very poisonous by itself. But when you bring them together, both of them together, in a proper Constitution, there's a proportionality. They become table salt. And the critical part of your constitution. Therefore, that poison individually becomes something that is supportive of life. When you are G, your GIJ, it will have every component, all and every component of your system there in that perfect, no problem state. If you maintain that, you will live as long as you maintain that. A perfect life. That is Gaga. It's God. It's God. That's also infallible. Also so this is the only equation that is required in search of knowledge of infallible truths. So the next thing is, okay, this seems to make a lot of sense, but can we rigorously prove it? Yeah, we can prove it all right. It's a simplified proof, first of all, which is, 
your addition of numbers. We've gone over that before. In other words, a GIJ represents must be when it's equal to zero, it says you that's where you came from. The GIJ is equal to zero. In other words, you add the initial dimension that is God, and that God is represented by zero, the origin. So when your GIJ is equal to zero, the comma is also equal to zero. So therefore, when you say 2 plus 1 equals what? Yes, it's equal to 3, that's correct. But where did that 3 come from? It comes from 2 plus 1 minus 3. That's where it came from. Which is 0. And zero is God, the origin, as in where you came from, as in if that did not exist, if it is nothing, then you will be nothing yourself. Think about it. That's not only something, but it is the totality. That is God. <laughs> they all understand. Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. That's it. So now, so you can see, therefore, now you've gotten the truth. How much of it do you grasp? You lucky if you understand point zero 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 percent zero 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 one percent. Hey, but be happy as the brother sings, you know. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> you understand? That's, right. That's God. <laughs> Don't worry. Now you begin to know who I am. That's the bottom line. And once you begin to that begin to know who I am, then you begin to know who you are. And once you know who you are, then you know your creator. The creator is the hugest thing, is the greatest. It's not a joke. It's not it's not a trivial. Now that's what gives you the power you need. That's what gives you the power. So then, what happens is, so if you add 2 plus 1, the answer is 3. But the only reason is 3 is, 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. Meaning it came from the creator. 0 is the creator. The origin. Where it came from. That's God's language, in other words. God ordered it, and it, it becomes a infallible truth. God said, and there was. That's how we were created. God said, let us be, and we were. It's from that zero. It's from that zero, the origin. You cannot conceptualize anything without an origin. So therefore, so that, okay, so then what about two plus one, uh, two plus three? What is that equal to? Obviously that is five. Five, okay. The only reason it is five is because two plus three minus five is equal to zero. It comes from God. It comes from God. So this God has no illusions. This is no 
know the concept of struggling to find out, well, what is God like and all the other stuff. But first of all, 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. But 2 plus, five, uh, 2 plus 3 minus 5 is also equal to 0. So, the 2 plus 1 minus 3 is what is called an invariant. Because 2 plus 3 minus 5 is also the same 0. Meaning, they come from the same source. That's God. The author of the infallible truth. The creator of the infallible truth. The origin of all infallible truths. That's, that's who God is. So when you try to, in other words, have just that transcends just one tiny infallible truth. In other words, 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. And 2 plus 3 minus 5 is equal to 0. The two left sides are not identical. But they're equal to the same thing. They, in their constitution, they're not identical. But their source is the same. That's God. All come from God. I say in every every creature comes from God. God created every and all creatures. <laughs> anyway, so where do you go? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Left side. What you left side? Left side of the equation. In other words, two plus one minus three is the left side. The the right hand side is the zero on the right hand side of equal sign. Yeah, equal sign. Is the sign. Go ahead. The equal sign symbolic of um Yes, well yes, the the amount, the amount. In other words, equal sign is really what defines the origin or you know the substance the quantity you're trying to measure you understand either on the x y x axis or y axis okay you start from there you draw the line representing the quantity okay so if you don't fix that point the origin you can measure the quantity Can you see that? You say you start from the zero. That's where it originates from. The the quantity that you're measuring is, is you know measures from. You must fix it so you get a sense. So that's why it's all always relative. So that, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Got it. Well, yeah, 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 well, that, that you go. In other words, it's for you to just get a sense of anything, you must have a starting point. You can't define anything. Yeah, you can't define anything without a starting point. It's not defined. It's not, it's not, it's nothing. It's nothing you could get out of it. It will not make any sense. If you make the starting point arbitrary, then you'll never be able to, you know, conceptualize it. <laughs> you understand? So, the you said arbitrary. What do you mean arbitrary? Well, but how can you, how could you say how much substance it is, it is without saying, okay, if you start from this point. In other words, if the starting point is 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 vague, you, it's not defined. Then you cannot conceptualize what you're trying to measure. 
because you try to measure how much quantity exists in the GIJ. Got to start from the zero. See, give me, give me another example. See, right now, you want to, you want to, you want to count how, how many chickens you have in your room, okay? You have to start from zero. From when there was no chicken. Then you said that, that at that time there was zero chicken. That's, that's the starting point. That's your reference. But if there are, you know, there are a lot of chickens, you can't count how many. You understand? You've got to start from somewhere. There has to be a starting point when you start the counting. If there were some chickens before, you have to say, okay, there was this many chickens before. So if new ones are coming in, you want to know how many more came in, you begin with the number that you started with. There's always an initial point for you to get a sense of anything. If you don't fix that initial point, you can't have a sense of that, ent that entity. And that is what fine thinking. Yes, that's what fine thinking you know, and geometric and quantitative thinking leads you to. Because it's easy to gloss over and say, oh yeah, well, that's trivial, that's nothing and all that, and then you get stuck quite, quite quickly. In precise science, particularly God of mathematics, everything must be precise. You've got to know, you've got to see the geometry and the initial conditions. That's part of the initial conditions. Without initial conditions, you can't you can't grasp anything. That's what we're simply saying. All right. So on that note, we're going to break for a little dinner. All right. You got you got something you're going to think over over the dinner, and then we'll return at about seven thirty. All right. God, God bless you. God bless you to you all. And God, 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 God greetings. God of green, Professor. Yes. Okay, I'm going to need that uh, stuff from the... Uh, you finished, right? No. Let me just keep you on the... No. Is it recording?